Hi, my name is Tanika, and this is my story. I grew up in a family, I grew up in the church. My family, you know, my grandfather was a minister, and we spent every Sunday and Wednesday in the church um, for Bible study on Wednesday, Sunday. My grandmother um, was a must, we must go to church. My mother was a single mother, and so my grandmother often um, would watch us, um, would keep us while my mother worked <clears throat> on the weekends and in the evenings. When my, my grandmother passed away when I was 13. I came, from, I came from a very large family. My grandmother had nine children, and all of their children had children. And so it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. And my mother had four, four girls. And so um, we have a pretty large family. Um, so when I was growing up, we always had things at my grandmother's house. She always cooked dinner and on Sundays. Um, and the holidays and it was always a big event. So when my grandmother passed away when I was 13, my life changed drastically. When I was growing up, I didn't, um, as a child, I didn't realize that um, things weren't right. Um, I didn't realize that the things that were happening to me weren't normal things. I was being sexually and physically abused um, for a lot of my childhood until I was 13 years old. Um, and then I began to run away from home. <clears throat> Every time I would run away from home um, and I would be picked up, I would be brought back home to my mother and I would just run away again um, because I didn't know how to tell her what was happening to me and um, she wasn't around a lot of the times and it was happening to me by another family member and I really couldn't put the words together to express or know what I was feeling inside. I really didn't understand it myself at that age and so I just knew that something wasn't right and that I didn't feel right and I didn't feel normal or happy. Last time I was brought home I was 15 years old and um, I finally got the courage to tell my mother and um, she didn't <clears throat> she, she didn't do anything about it she didn't say much to me and um, as a young child I misunderstood her as a teenager I just didn't understand her reaction and um, I was already in a very dark place I was already very confused and hurting and feeling very alone and so I tried to commit suicide I didn't feel like I had any options at that time. I didn't know what else to do. <clears throat> Before giving my heart and my life to God, I was very lost. I was hurting. I was angry. And I was searching for something outside of me that I didn't know how to get for myself. <clears throat> I used to think that in order to receive love, I had to get it from another person. So I saw or think. So I saw love from a lot of from the wrong people. And in a lot of different ways. And I used to believe that I would be happy if only I could have someone who loved me. Once I felt that love from someone else, that I would be happy for the rest of my life. No matter what, I have nothing to worry about. And I saw that from um, the wrong relationships, and every time um, I would get in one bad relationship after another, and unfortunately, um, the type of relationships and the type of people that I saw um, love from were didn't love me, were incapable probably of loving me or anyone else. Um, and they only used 
person in his ministry. And it, things just got worse and worse and worse over time. To the point to where when I was in my 30s, I found myself wanting to commit suicide again. It was a very, I remember that it was a very dark day. And I remember I was in a very dark place and I was searching for something to make me happy. And there was nothing. I was very empty. I was very lost. And I was very alone. And I was in a relationship. And I knew that if I stayed in that relationship, I was going to die. And I wanted out, but I didn't know how to get out. And I just thought the only way was to commit suicide. And I remember going for a walk that day, just crying and thinking that I had no other options. I just didn't know how I was going to do it. And I went for a walk and I was just walking and I don't know how and I don't know when or where this sign came from, but there was this sign that said, Jesus loves you. And at that point in my life, I believed that I was unlovable. And searching for something that would never make me happy. That could never make me happy. And um, when I saw that sign, I was angry with God up until that point. I had stopped going to church when I was 13. And I had returned um, because I was very angry and disappointed. Because I remember as a child crying out to God for help and asking for him to help me and with things to stop and it didn't stop and I remember many times in one bad relationship after another I would just ask God why why is this happening to me why and I just it, it was quiet so I could hear him at the point in my life I believed that God didn't love me and that I was unlovable. But it was until that day that I saw that sign that changed my life. I began, I remember going home that day and, and it was looking for a church um, in the phone book, searching and um, calling different churches, and um, I called the church. And this one church that I called, someone answered, and it was this very pleasant voice. And I asked her about the service times, and she was just very friendly and welcoming. And she even told me they had a coffee shop and, um, or cafe, and. So I went. I was living in, in Tempe, Arizona at the time, and I uh, found it, this church, and I started going. And they started, and I don't really remember this the sermon or which sermon changed my life or anything like that. I just knew I remember I felt like I belonged there, and I felt very loved. Every time I went to church, I felt loved. People were welcoming me. People were hugging me. And I began to trust God. 
and I began to believe that God loved me and that things would change in my life if I just gave everything over to him. And I did. It took some time. I want it took um I was baptized maybe a year later. And I remember the day that I was baptized because I was going to my church at the time and, and um, going through the process. This, the church that I was going to at the time required that you go through some steps to be before you be baptized uh, so that you know you knew what you were getting into. And it was Easter Sunday and my son invited me to his church. And so I went to his church and they, that day they were baptizing people. They were just... Anyone who wanted to be baptized, you just come up and be baptized. I wasn't dressed. I wasn't prepared. I hadn't gone through the process. I completed the process with my current church. I just remember my son says, to me, let's do it, Mom. And I thought, of course. So I did. And we did. And it was beautiful. And it was wonderful. And I thought my life was going to be different and things were going to change. And that day I was going to find the love and the peace and the joy that um, I so desperately wanted all my life. And I won't say that it didn't happen because I believe that it did. It just um, didn't happen suddenly. My life didn't change all of a sudden. Things weren't, um, I didn't notice things changing. But I will say that over time, gradually, I saw a change in my life. I saw a change in the way that I reacted to things. I, I started to believe in myself and I started seeking love from within me through Jesus, through the Bible, through God. God started hearing God all the time and I was talking to him I would be walking and talking to God I would be I saw God in the trees in the mountains um, for me that was my experience everyone's experience is different um, but I just know that there was a peace that was within me that happened um, but it happened gradually um, it took some time. I had to continue to go to church. I had to continue to pray, spend time in prayer, reading the Bible, um, studying the Bible for myself. Um, God slowly opened my eyes and showed me who I was, showed me the pain and the hurt um, that was inside of me and inside my heart. It showed me why I was searching for and what I was searching for. He showed me why he died for me. And he told me over and over again, many, many times through signs, like the signs I saw that day, um, through words and scripture and the Bible, through church um, ministry. I remember the church that I went to, they, um, would call you to the, have people call come to the author off altar every Sunday and so every Sunday I spent at the altar praying and I didn't even know the words to say to tell someone why or how I would just say pray over me because I was hurting and I wanted to live I didn't want to die anymore I didn't want to die. I just knew I didn't want to die. I wanted to live. And you know I wasn't perfect. And even though I had sin, a lot of sin in my life, and a lot of hurt and a lot of abuse,
God loved me just as I was and just who I was and that he forgave me for every sin even for the anger and the hurt that I had towards him when I have Jesus in my life I'm completely changed I no longer seek love from people outside of me. Although I still love to hug people and give love to other people that need it. I still struggle with things every now and then. Um, I'm not perfect, but I like what Boyce Meyer says, I'm not, I'm not where I need to be, but I'm not where I used to be. God is working on me every day. And every day I'm a changed person. Every day I grow closer and closer to who I am in Christ. I know I'm a child of God. I know God loves me. And I know no matter what, no matter what situation, I still have pains, I still have disappointments, I still have struggles in life. Life has not always been perfect every day. It's not always flowers and roses, but and I still have pain and hurt that I have to work through from my childhood, from the abuse and pain of the relationships that I allowed in my life. I still have things that I have to work through every day, for unforgiveness that I have to work through for people who have hurt me. And I constantly ask God for forgiveness for my sins and to help me forgive others who have sinned against me. but I'm not that same person anymore. Ever since I found God, I haven't gotten, I haven't felt, I haven't ever felt as low as that day. I will say that I haven't contemplated suicide. I haven't, if I get depressed, if I get down, I go straight to the Bible. I start quoting scriptures. I start thanking God for the things that I have in my life and being grateful for the things that I have, he has brought me through. I know God is with me no matter what. And that he loves me no matter what. And even if I don't ever reach perfection, that no matter what, God loves me. I know what it's like. I remember telling someone once I knew. <clears throat> It was a story about a woman who committed suicide after um, having her, her baby. And people were criticizing her for that. And I remember, <laughs> I know what that feels like. I know how dark that place was. And sometimes it's very hard to come back from. But I'm glad I didn't make that decision. And I'm glad that God was with me that day so that I can tell my story. And then maybe one day, maybe my story will help someone who is contemplating suicide. Because there is joy and there is peace and there is love and there is hope in Christ.